The Best of Times, brought to you by Charmin Bathroom Tissue. Charmin is so big and fluffy, so squeezably soft, it's irresistible. Hello, everybody. This is VHS Rewind. This is your host, the squeezably soft Chris. <laughs> and I am joined for these Best of Times with... My co-host Mark, how are you best, doing, Mark? The best of times, man. It's it is. It's the best of times. The demonic uh, Charmin. <laughs> <laughs> you see the baby, the the um, inverted image of the baby in that thing. It, like it was an X-ray or something. It was yeah. like it's it kind of creepy. It's kind of creepy. It, it kind of like yells at you. It's like, <laughs> Are I'm I'm just curious. Are viewers gonna see what we're seeing right yeah. now? Well, well, yes and no. We're gonna upload this to VHS Rewind so people can just listen to the podcast. Okay. But I'm okay. also going to edit this and throw it up on YouTube. Okay, because I was just, again, I was being nostalgic right now, and I'm looking at this freeze frame that you have of TV snow. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, wow, I missed that. I just, I realize now <laughs> you don't get that today. I was just like, oh, snow. But you know, TV snow. static is one of those things that maybe you're nostalgic for for a moment, right? <laughs> but, until it, until it's kind of like, uh, like when you're, used to watch your VHS tapes and that little line would go up yeah. every once in a while, the tracking, and you had to fix that. Well, you know how, like, you, you always had a friend. Yeah, like, you're nostalgic almost for the um, for the tracking thing, but it's kind of like, after a little while, it gets annoying. But, you know, everybody has that friend who you kind of miss, and then... <laughs> like, hey, then they I, come around. I wonder what uh, Jimmy's up to. And you speak to him, <laughs> and 20 minutes into the conversation, you remember why you find Jimmy to be a pain in the ass. You know? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I think we're going to have a lot of nostalgia talk. Yeah. Uh, we are covering this week a busted pilot that I guess aired. It must have aired at least once. Yeah, it must have. Um, I mean, there's commercials, so yeah. Yeah, um, and it's called The Best of Times, and it has such a stellar, stellar cast. <laughs> Half nobodies. I, I think it, it has one star in this. That is one star that never was, and it's this fella named Nicholas Coppola, <laughs> and he could have went far. He could have really gone far. Nicholas Coppola, man. I mean, it's funny because you know he's where he is primarily because of nepotism. I mean, there's no doubt about it. All of the Coppolas, right? Yeah. Um, you know, whether it be um, Sophia. Yeah, Sophia Coppola. Well, Sophia Coppola, but she's the newer generation. You know, but um, Talia Shire, you know, that's uh, Nick Cage's oh, brother. Oh, yeah, I forgot Maybe about that. Brother, right. sister. <laughs> it's, her, it's his brother. But yeah, Talia <laughs> Shire. Um, I think that's his sister. I'm not 100% sure how all that works. Do you? Like, are they cousins? Uh, sh I think Talia, isn't that France? Yeah, I think they are sisters, brother and sister. Yeah. But Nicolas Cage ended up being, you know, I think, just such a unique actor and such a good actor at times. I mean, he's had low points, of course. And and his, his future mannerisms come out during this, during this yeah. episode, this, yeah, this show that we're about to watch. Now, the, the um, lead in here is uh, Crispin Glover. What do you think of Crispin Glover? Now, Crispin Glove, you talk about Nick Cage being a unique actor. Yeah, he is. Crispin, Crispin Glover is off the scale. Like, even Nick Cage is like, whoa, man, that guy is, <laughs> that guy is way off the charts. Mm -hmm. um, and so when Crispin Glover tries to play it straight, yeah. I don't, I don't think it works. I think it's, I think it's really, Funny, there, there's actually one scene in this where he's acting Crispin. He's right, acting I'm like curious, the Crispin we know. I'm curious which one that's going to be, so point that out when we get to it. Okay. Uh, so I'm, this this I'm show, just we, let's just it. intro, it's called The Best of Times, and I thought it was a rip off of Fast Times, you know, because it follows mm -hmm. high school seniors, and, you know, of course, it's high school seniors who already... They're going to college next year, they say a few times, but it looks like they already finished college. They look so old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Nick Cage, especially. Um, but it's their high school seniors, and it's just random episodes. And I thought it was like just 
a response to Fast Times at Ridgemont High, but actually this show predates it. This is 81, and Fast Times was 82. I think this is a very innovative show. I think this is a very forward-thinking show. There's um, There are elements in here <laughs> of, like, um, I don't know if you've ever been a Glee-tard, but um, it reminds me of Glee in the sense of where they break into music. <coughs> but here, there's really no reason for it. Well, in Glee, there isn't either. <laughs> It's, well, they're a know, glee club, so I can imagine that, oh, well, that song would follow them around. Yeah, true, true. But, um, but they, you know, but in the middle of glee, they'll just be like, they're going to like the roller rink, and all of a sudden it turns into like a music video or something stupid like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and, yeah, I mean, I, I, and talking Plus, directly to the camera is. Yeah, also, I was just going to mention, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that there's a lot that I like about this. It's a lot I don't. Like about uh, I, I agree with you that there was something here, and it's like, wow, this script is like, this is the first draft. They they didn't work on this <laughs> at no. all. So this guy, and, uh, I just want to point out, David Rambo, um, he ended up becoming a producer for some pretty big stuff for um, like Empire, CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, um, Chicago PD, like a lot of, he, he's had a whole career. He even worked on uh, V, the reboot of V from 2011. Really? Yeah, like he's executive producer, producer, you know, like it's kind of, you know, he, he got away from the camera because he wasn't very good in front of it. There is a, a character on here who is uh, a chick, a woman, a girl, is who wants girl to be hair? in a band. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And... I mean, we'll get to her story arc, but did you know that she's, like, an actual musician? Like, no. I didn't realize that. She was, I mean, not bands that I know of. One called Precious Metal, I think it was. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, she's just, she is a musician. And, you know, when we see her play, and like you say, playing a guitar that's twice as big. <laughs> yeah, well, she's playing, she she's playing a full-size um, Gibson Les Paul. And those I, I have one. They're very, very heavy, and they're very big. But, you know, hey, uh, if she's really playing that thing, that's even cooler. It didn't look like it. That's what I was going to say. I mean, uh, it didn't look like she but was playing she it. But I was play, shocked you know. that she went on to anything else because, mm-hmm. I mean, we'll get to it. She is awful in this. Um, so we have the token black guy as well who um, – he he did some stuff, but most notably, he played uh, Fred Sanford as a child in the original Sanford and Son. <laughs> Are you serious? I didn't look that one up. <laughs> yeah, 1975, though. I mean, so, you know, it's a good six years before this. <laughs> wow. Okay, so let me ask you. We have Crispin. We have Nicolas Cage. Mark have- Popage, who plays, um, you know, that's, that's the name of the guy. Did you recognize the Little House connection? Yes, I posted in the group, in the Walnut Grovecast group. So, um, Jill uh, Sholin is, yep. plays um, the Isaiah Edwards um, love interest who is blind, um, Jane. And she suffers here from the same thing she did in the Little House episode. <laughs> She's blind? Her voice <laughs> is so dead. It's so monotone. She's very breathy. That, but just, it. she has no upper or lower register. She's just this dead monotone, and we will rip her say, apart when we get there. I would say she's probably the closest to being an accurate teenager. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? Well, you know, kind of nothing there. You know, like, no, pretty girl, not too much substance. Um, and then in the middle of sitting in, in all of it is um, a man who attended my shul a number of times because it was his um, synagogue, is uh, Jackie Mason. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Jackie Mason, now, did you find him funny? Uh, I mean, just outside of this, like his stand-up or anything? The, I found... Jackie Mason to be funny out of the people who do that type of shtick, which is like the one-liner the, type of the thing. Borscht belt. Yeah, I mean, he, out of all of that, he was one of the funnier ones. But do I own a Jackie Mason album? No. <laughs> but I know you do own a Don Rickles album. Don Rickles, it's on its way. <laughs> and Eddie Murphy. Um, well, I already own um, 
pretty much all of them except for this one. It might even be a bootleg, which even makes it better. Wait, you were getting these uh, albums by mail order? I bought them on Discogs. This episode is brought to you by Discogs.com. <laughs> Uh, and Charmin. Yeah, you know what? I was looking for the Jack White album where I, I'm going down this rabbit hole of buying vinyl just, you know, to bore everyone. Actually, it kind of fits into a 1981 review, right? And uh, Jack White from the White Stripes owns a record company. He's doing all this cool, kind of cool stuff. And he put out this one album. And I don't know. I forget the title of it. But there's all this technology that he's put into a record. That has never happened before. It's called like ultra vinyl, he calls it. It works on any record player. Like, all right, so you know how like you put a record on, right? And it, you play your song. Well, he put a groove next to that one. So if you can somehow get that needle to go into the next groove, it's playing the same exact song acoustically. Wow. Yeah. And it's, it's, I wanted to experience it myself because it's like, wow, that seems kind of, you know, unique, you know? And how much was this? Like albums today, fifteen They're... bucks for the Jack White one. The other ones were like three bucks, four bucks. One was eight dollars. Every the whole entire order was like fifty-two bucks shipped for like six or seven albums. Wow. Okay. I bought one like really old one that was like fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's a news record. It's like one of those old like um like a nineteen forty-nine. <laughs> Like really? Somewhere. Yeah, you gotta oh, go. Wow. To, to sign up for Discogs, man. Use the use right. the promo code VHS Rewind to save ten percent. <laughs> now don't do that. And we get a kickback. I wish. Um, <laughs> speaking of music, though, Crispin Glover did have a music career. He put out some really kind of experimental music for a while. And he's put out uh, books, like he self published oh, books that, that he wrote. I know. I have I have two of them. Are they any good? <laughs> you know, they're not, not really. They're not, you know, they're books in this, you know, they're not novels. They're, As you know, Landon photo collages oh, yeah. with scribbles. And yeah, I'm hoping that when he dies, they're going to be worth something. Oh, that's all. That's, that's the only reason I got him. <laughs> the guy's only 10 years older than me, so I think he's going to be. I like him a lot. I think he's a pretty intense actor. I like anybody when, who's willing to sue back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> Did he win? I have no idea. I don't know. That's I don't think funny. so. Sad. Um, I've I, you know I like him in his weird roles. Like he was in the remake of Willard. Uh, he was yeah. in a remake of I think The Wizard of Gore. Yeah. Um, I like him when he's, you know, he was in Friday the Thirteenth. You know, obviously, his most famous role is in Friday the Thirteenth Part Four. Mm -hmm. Uh, he wasn't so crazy. He was kind of like here. He's kind of straight. Um, but he has a dance scene that uh, rivals the one here. Mm -hmm. No, it betters it. It betters it. But, you know, in Back to the Future, he was only like 25 years old or something. Like he was. Is that right? Is yeah. that right? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy if you think about it. I looked up Jill Sholin, and she was born in 63. So she was like 18, 19. Yeah, I when mean, the, everybody they, kind so, of was in that age group. So, I mean, they weren't too old. How old was Nick Cage? That I didn't look up. I think he's in that same, you know, kind of avenue of, you know. He's in, but let's let's play the first clip from this. You have to forgive us. We couldn't find a better copy. But you know what? I, I don't think there are better copies out there. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Yeah. I didn't clean your room today. Uh, right, Mom. And I'm not going to. It stays that way until you do it. So that's the voice of Crispin Glover's real mother. Uh, what's her first name? Laura something? I, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Um, you said you found a picture. Betty. Betty Glover plays Crispin's mother. And, yeah, so I was like, oh, yeah, I wonder what she looks like, you know? Um, so, all right, so this is what I searched for. Betty Glover Crispin, right? <laughs> and... I found this photo. This photo. I was like, holy shit, Chris Glover looks terrible. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like, what is this? This is um, from 2008. It's 15 years ago? How, how is this possible? Wow. But that's his dad. 
I think. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. That's not his dad. It's his Benny Glover with Bruce Glover. Oh, is that? Wow, I can't say. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah it's for. I, I didn't read the fine print either. Uh, well, you probably so Bruce can. Glover. Just so everybody knows, you know, most famously, he was the one of the henchmen, one of the most well-regarded henchmen in the James Bond film *Diamonds Are Forever*. Uh, he was in, you know, he just always played the bad guy in mm-hmm. a string of 70s exploitation films. And he's got a cool look, too. You know, he really does. He's got a cool look and a cool delivery. But um, here they are back, this is 15 years ago, so I still don't know what Crispin Glover looks like today. But you said he looks more like his dad, right? So, uh, Yeah, if the, when you say this is 15 years ago, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure he's looking haggard looking. Let's look it up, Crispin Glover. I don't know. I mean, I like Crispin Glover's look. Um but yeah, so this is like about 15 years ago with him and his parents, and I was right. I saw that Crispin Hellion Glover is on Facebook, and I was going to send him a message and say, hey, best of times, remember that? We're covering it. Do you want to talk about Wait, it? Who but did I... you send this to? Sorry? Who, who did you send it to? I was going to. It's Crispin has a Facebook account. Oh, okay. Um, But it hadn't been updated in like a while, so I figured he's... Probably got better things to do. I kind of question those things sometimes. I don't know. I, I don't know if this is... I can't find anything. I, I mean, maybe he's older here. If that's the case, he, he looks fine. He's looking good. Yeah, he's looking good. Yeah. Looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I, I for whatever reason, I always thought he was like a heroin addict. Or, so if he's alive, even better, right? So... <laughs> Ouch. I, I don't know why I thought that. There was like a Hollywood rumor, I think, in the 90s. Maybe it wasn't a rumor. Who knows? So, yeah. That, so, that's his real-life mom. I don't know if that's his real-life dog. Kristen, are you listening to me? Yeah, Mom. <laughs> don't forget to take out your jacket. So, he's just kind of being all like... um I Physical guess, well, comedy, not what I associate Crispin Glover with. Yeah, we, we kind of. He wears this shirt too with the stars on it, which <laughs> I don't know. He wears it the whole time. I didn't kind of get it. Just it's 1981. Does but, that help? But he wears it all the time. Like later on, he wears it, but you can always see the stars on his shoulders. <laughs> um. So, but he breaks the third wall. That's my mom. And this is my room. I don't think it's messy. I can find anything I want, like um, my cassette player. I'll find it five seconds tops. Why- now, this is how my son's friends act. No joke, but he's 15. So I don't think an 18 year old would be acting like this. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Uh, like where it's kind of like, I know where everything is. You know, it's kind of like a wise ass answer. And it's kind of. So he's looking for his cassette thing it takes way too long looking for it yeah to get to that um so wait he's gonna introduce his friends here so maybe yeah. we should uh... here's another thing is everybody plays characters that are their actual names in real life. which you know it took me a while <laughs> it took me a while oh i didn't get oh yeah aside from crispin i didn't really think about it until the very very end when he actually announces that was like is he involved like is this his production but it's not (laughs) you've seen them all right (laughs) oh these are my friends by the way this is a uh, on imdb this is a tv movie right but yeah i mean that's what it's called but it's only an hour long right it's an hour (laughs) all right so that's where i'm Wanted to go. It's an hour long with the soundtrack, with a laugh track. Like, what is that? Yeah. That's yeah. Bad laugh track, too. Bad. So here we get um, Coppola. <laughs> Nick Coppola. So <laughs> this this will show where, like, the Nick Cage mannerisms were yeah. that are going to come to fruition. Mm-hmm. This is my and hair. Remember when he had hair? Yeah. A dick. Do you know why? Would you tell him he wasn't your best friend? <laughs> Here's Kevin. He's a real ladies man. Man, all he needs is a lady. Was that a no? <laughs> Some that guy did nothing else. But nothing. you got a couple cheap laughs that actually made me laugh. Like when, like I thought he delivered it well. Like when he turns around, and says, was that a no? <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
Um, now, this actress we've seen, I think, in a million things, but I don't really... She was in The Facts of Life. Yeah, I think maybe that's where I know her. Very pretty uh, girl. I don't remember you. her from Facts of Life, so she must have been that first season where they pruned them away mm -hmm. and left only the core that we know. Yeah, and this one definitely was taking the spotlight away from um, Blair Warner. I, I forget what her real name is. Um, Lisa Welchel? Welchel. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she, this girl would definitely be taking her spotlight away. Everyone thinks she's cute. Uh, Julie thinks so, too. Well, this is David. Boy, is he busy. As well as going to school, he's holding down three part-time jobs. Better make that two part-time jobs. Alisa, uh, she's a real sweetheart. She works out a lot. Trouble is, working out makes her hungry. And here's Jill. Isn't she pretty? Of all my friends, she's the most mature. So, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's... It's cute. It's a cute show. No, wait. You got one more. Oh, you got one, one more. more friend that we need to show. Oh, we, I forgot the, the rock star. Well, most of the time. Here's Janet. She's 14 and really wants to play in a band. Ready. <laughs> well, those are my friends. Nice group, right? Not really. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Loser. Yeah, so it, it's a cute idea and i think that this could have grown into something if given the opportunity to you, what do you and think? i kind of like that you know f at least for this episode i don't know how you would keep it up but there's like just scenes that are like a minute long that just get to a punchline, and it's kind of like i don't know it's like laughing or something you know there's just like a yeah. skit mm -hmm. for like 30 you know 30 to a minute but then we get like it a likes. serious moment, right? Yeah, we'll get to that. But for I want to, I want to do some of the stupid stuff first, yeah, yeah. so that people get. There's a whiplash tonal shift with Nick Cage, and I was like, "What the fuck was right, that?" Right. It's kind of like you're bumming me out right now. Like, and what are you talking? What war, like? I forgot what was he talking <laughs> El about. Salvador. El Salvador. Like, I this has a lot that. of dated stuff in yeah. it. That uh, I'm gonna ask you about. I don't uh, know video Paul, games yeah. and things like that. Yeah, I added a few and, notes to your notes, but um. yeah. And so, what's great about this is that we can skip around. There's no, yeah. there's no plot or anything. It's just disconnected yeah. scenes, and so we can just pick and choose now. Mm -hmm. no, it's true. <laughs> I mean, if you want to play the just the Kevin, the first Kevin one. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought, like you, that that guy was... He wasn't bad. I mean, I, I was laughing at him, maybe because I related, but... Look at the demon baby. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't dislike the Kevin character. Um, but yeah, I'm going to play his his thing right now. How oh. about <laughs> Whatever that is. So yeah, and I love it. We're on payphones, you know? Right? Uh, only 10 cents back then. Oh no, he says a quarter, I think, at some point. In eighty one, it was a quarter. I feel like it that's didn't... what they. That's what he says. The operator asks him for later. Oh yeah, because he says, "Can I get my quarter back?" Yeah, yeah. No, no, Kevin, with a K. Yeah, right. Hey, hey, listen. Uh, do you have a day for the dance? No, that's Kevin Hadley. He plays football. I'm the other, <laughs> smaller Kevin. Do you have a pinky ring? Well, uh, I, I'm kind of short, and I wear glasses. I used to be a hall monitor on the third floor. <laughs> At this point, it should have just been clicking going to the next scene. But Yeah. Hey, do you have a... No, no, no. Uh, I'm sort of blonde. I think if you saw me, you'd recognize me. Some people think I look a little bit like John Denver. He does. <laughs> yeah, right. He does look like John Denver, and I don't know if that was a good thing in 1981 <laughs> or ever <laughs> right yeah by 81 was well, i think wasn't he dead by then no i don't think no so. yeah, that's me oh you can't <laughs> well look uh, maybe in about you won't well listen amy maybe i could uh oh i can't <laughs> well uh 
Well, listen, Amy, it sure has been nice talking to you, and I hope that maybe... Hello? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Hello? Ah, rejection. Well, how about that? You must have been cut off. <laughs> All right, here we have All right Nick. here's the Nick. Here's the Nick Cage where we get to see Nick Cage in, in utero, it's but like he's, in he's almost there. <laughs> it's like in jail or something. I, I guess they had like weight sets just out at the beach. Um, where people, well, don't you use? think, how great would it be to be a high schooler with like beaches nearby? And yeah. man, I was, I was envying them. Yeah. Wait, remember Rocky? Boy, what a movie. Yeah. The best scene was when Stallone kept hitting that side of beef. Remember that? He kept hitting. And the guy's eating a hamburger. That side of beef, just smashing it with his fist. That was all raw. These guys in the background are probably just like, hey, we're going to watch this <laughs> show get filmed. <laughs> <laughs> Hit, smash, hit, make it all bloody. <laughs> Shoot a job in that beef. Nick? Yo. I, I would say Nick Cage has never been in better shape, right? I know. I was just looking. I was like, yeah, you're right. You're He's right. He's got a six pack, you know. It's, look at him. Do you ever see any Disney pictures? <laughs> Do you ever see any Disney? All right, so the girls. <laughs> are... <laughs> kind of, right? Um, I think after this scene, uh, where the girls are gonna say something funny, there's they they use this music cue to get to the next scene and like from they, here to there. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Watch. No, well, not in this one, but oh, after okay. the end of this uh, makeup scene. So they're at the makeup counter when I guess um, I don't think you're allowed to do this anymore. Just try on makeup anymore. Um, let me know. Um. So I take my daughter to like Ulta, yeah, 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 and Sephora, and they do have not like this, not as much as this, but they do have some things. And she always, because she doesn't have pockets mm -hmm. with you know her tights or whatever you call them, right? So she makes me steal some of the <laughs> you know, eyebrow and brushes and things like that. Um, so they Too they funny. do a little, but not to this degree anymore, anyway. right? I mean, I think back in the olden days, you could basically go and do your makeup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, you know, this is over 40 years ago. It's kind of crazy. Wow. It's San Diego. Yeah, literally, it's 43 years ago. It's bananas. <laughs> is that the thing? That was <laughs> it. Yeah, it's like almost like a little like synthesizer thing. Um, a cheap, a cheap synthesizer. Yeah, like I have like, um, uh, I wish I had it in front of me. I have this like little synthesizer. It's just like, <laughs> like you can do that. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll bust it out for next time. I oh, you know what? I'm going to play it. The whole thing is kind of cool. Before I knew it, we'd gone all the way <laughs> to San Diego. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's got a rotary there too. Even I was kind of dated for eighty-one. Hi, Chris Ow. Ben. Hi, Hi, David. Hi, Mr. Riley. Oh, how do you do? I, I always went. How do you do? <laughs> how do you do? Uh, I think he's you a give general. a That's what the stars are. <laughs> it, really? No, uh, I don't. Know. No, I mean I don't. I don't get it. Find on this bottle. Sure. Tape cassettes at the counter. Now, he, later on in the scene where Crispin buys one, yeah, it's they cost six fifty for a cassette in 1981. Does that sound right? Um, I mean, I never bought a cassette at a convenience store. <laughs> <laughs> but I do remember there being like, you go to a gas station, it would be like cheap cassettes for sale for like two or three dollars. Yeah, they were like cutouts. They weren't like six fifty. Um, yeah, I mean, who knows? I think six fifty was like. The LP. I don't know. <laughs> It'd be awesome if you had LPs. Um, so let's see. We have the bottle return thing, which is still going on this, today. And this leads into like a dance. In, I don't I use a dance number <laughs> up and that. down the aisles. Look at that picture. <laughs> Nick Cage. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. That's, that's, the, that's the post that you put with the write up. Yeah, there you go. There's actually a couple. Of um, interesting ones with him. <laughs> <coughs> Freaking so weird. So the bottles are basically you get um, 
you if you return a bottle, you get five cents back, right? And they still have that today. So they bring in all their bottles. What what was the reason for them bringing all the bottles? Uh, they were just trying to make some money. Yeah, for nothing specific. Right? But Jackie is like being a tight ass Jew, and he's like, "Hey, these are not all from my store. Well, these, if I had, to, if I sold this much, I'd be a glass maker." I feel like they still do that. <laughs> like, if you go to Costco, um, I don't. I'm a bad person. I don't return stuff like deposits and stuff. But you see people doing it, and there'll be signs saying a limit of like X amount or something like that. Really? You, there's a limit? I think so. I mean, I don't know if they enforce it. Wow. I don't, I don't know how it all works. I'm I'm a terrible person. I don't recycle. Yeah, I, I see people like going to the supermarket or whatever and they got bags of the recycling and it's I not worth I laugh. I laugh. It's, I mean I hate to say it's not worth sixty cents or a dollar. <laughs> <It's> not. <laughs> I, I mean, all right, so what is it? Like twenty cans or bottles would be a dollar? I would rather yeah. just pay a, just not have the dollar. And not have to stand there putting cans in. Right. I, I have a recycling thing. Where the, the truck comes around every Tuesday and picks it up. Yeah, we have a recycling thing, but they don't pick it. The, it from what, what? I What? Well, I, I think if you were to look in deeper, the whole recycling thing is such a big scam in most cities and most municipalities. It's it's awful. Like they just, so you're saying I should just throw it all in the garbage? Yes. Don't sort. <laughs> like, you know when they say, like, don't throw this battery out? It's like, what the hell else am I going to do? Move it. Go dispose of it properly. All right. It goes in my garbage. I, I mean, I don't really... Oh, geez. I, I put in my diabetic syringes in the garbage, everything. <laughs> oh, my God. There you go. <laughs> um, so here we are. We're in the... Remember the olden days when you had a... Uh, like you go to a convenience store like this, right? Even though this one's pretty well stocked and there would be a video game machine in the back. Yep. And yeah, they're playing music and Nick Cage comes over. He's like very cringy. <laughs> right, so what is game. that? This is Arkanoid. I don't remember that. Honestly, uh, I don't Arkanoid that. is a pretty good game. There's a lot of video games in here that I'm going to be asking you about. And some cars. Are there a lot of them? Are there a lot of video games? I don't recall there being a lot of them. Yeah, you're, they're playing them, so we have to guess what they're playing. Okay. But the play is kind of like unique, so I'm thinking you're probably going to know it. All right. I'll try my best. Try my best. Um, so let's, see, let's get past this whole dance number. The dance number yeah, to me... Yeah, it goes... Wait, wait, I want to do Jill, though, because yeah, 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 I want yeah. folks to hear this dead voice. I, I like mean, her. I li she's I... attractive. She's attractive. I liked her in some of her <laughs> horror exploitation movies like Curse to the Bite and wow. Phantom of the Opera, but she's attractive, but... Wow, this voice is like... Here's the thing. I think I don't think she was the reason why this wasn't picked up. But I know what you mean. Like, she could use a little bit more... Like, they should have made her the stoner or something. Yeah, like, give her some drugs, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a 7-Eleven, by the way. I didn't... I, I remembered it when I watched it, but I just remembered I saw the logo right here. Oh, Where? On the garbage. Oh, can. Yeah. oh, oh, so, oh, oh, so wow. Legit, I didn't catch that. It's a legit 7 Eleven back in the day, you know. I know this is silly, but I'm afraid of being alone. Oh, sure, I've got my folks and my friends. So these are like serious moments, too. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? I mean, it's not as bad as the other one, but I was like, why are you like such a drip? <laughs> <laughs> You are a drip. But they're not there all the time. <laughs> I used to have this doll. I'd love it if she was like, sometimes I go into my father's liquor cabinet. <laughs> 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 I swipe the key from the old lady. And then I got the mom's little helpers. Right, right, right. You know, a quaalude and a shot. Uh, and after you know, smoking <laughs> a blunt, uh, she has very healthy hair, too. Yes. I, Shiny. I, I like her. This kitten and I used to talk to her. Next year, I'm going away to college. She, you know who she reminds me of is the girl who played Winnie Cooper? 
I don't know who that is. Uh, I don't yeah, know I know who you're talking about, and who's also that... kind of dead on the inside. <laughs> I think she was cuter though, but she, Jill here, is sexier. Like she's probably. Well, I think the Winnie Cooper the girl is like young. Like, yeah, I thought. I mean, she's not young anymore. She's probably older than me. But <laughs> and I certainly can't bring a dollar kitten to college, can I? I know I'll make new friends. Those other times, like when there's a storm outside and you're all alone and there's nothing there to hold on to or I'll talk to. to. <laughs> I'll hold on to you, Jill. You'll reach for your vibrator. Oh, God. <laughs> he went there. I'm sorry. That's What's that, Michael Landon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a laugh. Let's oh, get a Michael God. Landon laugh. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know if I have his laughs here. Let's look. Sure is big enough. Um, that was Laura. <laughs> um, <laughs> um <laughs> No, nah, I don't think I have Michael Landon laughing here. Okay. I have him saying hogwash. Hogwash, yeah? <laughs> That's, what episode is that from? That's from the oh same one gosh. where he goes. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You should. People should check out Landon Nation. Landon Nation's new podcast coming out. Kelly. Uh, Kelly Milky's idea. When is the first episode due? Oh, we haven't recorded it yet. Uh, oh. I think no. Well, we're going to release it all on um, Valentine's Day, February fourteenth. What is the first episode? <clears throat> Do you know? Um, it's going to be a Highway to Heaven episode. Nice. Yeah. And that's what this is from. Oh, yeah! <laughs> it's an easy getting old. Yeah, you can tell, tell me again. Oh, you're so sad. You're so sad. Oh. Now, okay, okay. Can we... This this girl, I, f- I think her... I forget what her name is, but the girl, the chick who wants to be in the band. hmm This girl is such a terrible actress. Watch how she plays with her hair and looks at the camera. She is... She's just... Terrible. Terrible. All right. Is this Lisa? Is it Lisa? I, I'm trying to remember who. I cannot remember her name. Um, yeah. yeah. We got to talk. You said I'd be playing in the band, not carrying in the band. Look, I got you this far, didn't I? Yeah, See, but I she want looked. to play. Well, take it easy. I know that. But the other guys are sort of... So this guy who played Red Fox. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah. Well, they're not used to the idea of a girl playing for them. First, we gotta get them used I to having you... I gotta see your... if I can find a photo of that, by the way. Around. Hey, you! Get that equipment in here! <laughs> see? They're getting used to you already. <laughs> Here's Nick Cage doing his workouts. Um, I think this is one of those ones where things get kind of serious, right? No, I, he's going to teach him to talk to a, a chick who's sitting nearby. All right, and it's kind of weird. It's it's not even like dated. It's like, even back then it would be bad advice. You yeah, just walk up to her and. I just can't believe Nick Cage's hair. It's just amazing. <laughs> it's also the same joke, like. Just talk to me, my friend's watching, type of thing. Yeah, and like this, he does this throughout the episode. There are scenes of him time after time just trying to like score just, a date. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. The girls are doing their makeup again. I'm going to play it. But you, you mentioned, you did a little bit of a background on one of the things that they're talking about, which is the Scarsdale doctor. Right, they make a joke about the death of the Scarsdale diet doctor. And I didn't know if you remembered that. No. I didn't remember it until I read about it. And then I was like, Oh, that was Gene Harris. Right, right, right. Um, but I was, I was like shocked that they brought that up. Well, let's see this. Um, yeah, that was in 1981. That happened on March 20th, 1981. When, um, <laughs> this was probably filming. Yeah, I, we, I don't have a date of when this aired. 
but you know, there's... yeah, I couldn't find a, any sort of air date. But it's March, so it's like this. I mean, they had to have known about it. So let's say this is filming in April. I mean, they quickly edited and put it out for what? I mean, when does this air? December. And yeah, I mean, it's no later than that. I'm starting on a new diet. I thought you were to diet now. I am. I'm on the lettuce diet, but I'm not losing any weight. Well, what's your new diet, Mike? It's real simple. Just bread and water. Sounds like a prison diet. <laughs> That's right. It's by the lady accused of shooting the Scarsdale doctor. <laughs> Damn. Left track. You know, it makes a big difference when you put it into context like that. Right? I mean, just like, wow, too soon, people. Literally. <laughs> that's, wow, and that's kind of like in our neck of the woods, you know. That happened in, um, you know, upstate New York, Scarsdale. Uh, oh, okay, that's upstate. I actually thought it was Long Island. So, Scarsdale. <laughs> Scar- I don't think so. Where, where is Scarsdale? I'm going to do a quick little search of that. It's a town in New York State. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Google. Um, bad things don't happen in Long Island. That's what you're saying. No, um, we have enough <laughs> bad things that happen. No, Scarsdale's actually right near White Plains. It's closer than I thought. That's, so that's it's up not there. really upstate. No, I mean, it's like, you know, there's the Bronx, there's Yonkers, and then there's Scarsdale. Oh, I thought it was up further because I would assume it's well to do. It's so. not as far as like Sleepy Hollow, for instance. Okay. But White Plains is a pretty wealthy area. So. <laughs> it's the whole white part of the name that you're paying for. <laughs> uh, so let's see, we're stalking. This is kind of funny where he talks over his head a bit. Listen, David. Do you ever stop to think of what you're going to be when you grow up? After all, you can be a stock boy forever. Oh, yeah. I'm going into genetic engineering with a specialty in chromosome aminographology and DNA recombinants. Now, 1981, this is like a hell of a thing to really go into, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the birth of, like, you know, DNA hadn't even been used in, like, crime labs yet. <laughs> but, you know? <it's... laughs> and Jackie Mason gives him a good deadpan, but Jackie Mason's just not... Like, I can think of other deadpan people who could pull this off better, like... Um, if you were to put Jerry Stiller, Jerry Stiller would have been able to do this role a lot better. And and you know what? His his vocal intonations, like, I don't know. I don't find him funny when well, he... He doesn't he... deliver this. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, if it doesn't work out, you could always open your own hardware store. I don't get it. Like, what that I... voice only works coming out of an aardvark, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, it did. I don't know why. It just does. Um, yeah, I'm not really... But I think we get the music. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is a good clip. Play that one. This is the worst song in the whole thing, though. You gotta... Oh, oh, wait. I'm sorry. I thought this. I thought they were going to a break here. Sorry. Um, oh, no. That's. Um, I'm going to go to that. I got to skip over this. They do a version of 9 to 5. I'll play like five seconds. I mean, it's terrible. And and I gotta say, Nick Cage like is full into this thing. This all throughout. I mean, he dances. He's like the guy in the bar mitzvah, like leading the entire thing. Yeah, the Congo line. Car. What is that? I, I Name that say, car. I want to say it's um, a Supra. It might be a Toyota Supra. I don't know. I want to. That's why. I, I mean, if you want to fast forward through that, I'm going to stop you when we see a car and. Or it see might be you, a yes. Nissan like 320X. I, I'm not really 100 percent sure. I'm not good on 1980s cars. That thing. That's like a Gremlin, isn't it? I can't. I couldn't even. I don't even see half of it. Uh, that's this the one that one. Nick Cage like drives off a track or something. I'm kind of curious if you knew which one that was. Um. I think. You, oh, okay. Yep. Well, it's here, right? All right, so you th- this car is... What is that, what is that yellow thing? Yeah, I that, like that. That's the one I was saying. I think that might be a gremlin. This has, what, like, rounded do you know who windows. Does that? What? Do you know who does that? I think AMC, the AMC gremlin. I like that I'm back. not 100% yeah. sure about that, though. Let me just look that up real quick. AMC gremlin... 
Hmm, I don't know if it's right, actually. This might be like a... Is that like a newer model? Because... Well, like that orange one towards the middle in the first row that you... Sh yeah, like this one is... They're more square. But these were like eight-cylinder cars. Like, these were really fast. <laughs> were they really? Yeah, they're very expensive now. Look at this thing with the, <laughs> the hood scoop. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what that is. I th I'm just not sure. I could find out. This thing does look we like... We stump the master. Uh, this thing looks like a... Um, what was that company? Oh, your thing vanished. I know I'm fixing it. Yeah. Um, there was like a Japanese car company that kind of vanished, right? It was like Honda, Toyota, and then there was another one. Mitsubishi. Uh, uh, um, Hyundai. No, Hyundai's Korean. Um, but they don't make them anymore. But, you know, it was like in the 80s. Like, and I, I'm pretty sure Nissan bought them. Hmm. Let me um, see if I can do a quick. Well, there's Japanese. Honda, there's Toyota, there's... Um, I don't know. Dotson. Dotson. That's it. Dotson. Boom. I, I, <laughs> this might have been a Dotson. I'm not 100 sure. Man, that name is a blast from the past. Yeah, Dotson, Dotson. man. Jeez. Yeah, we're old. But these cars. Oh wait, this might be a. That might even say mine. <laughs> That looks like it says Mazda, maybe. Oh, you know, my eyes are I, shut. I can't see that. I mean, it's not really your eyes. It's the blurry-ass photo that... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be the picture for the cover. <laughs> oh, if you could do it as a gift, because he doesn't move. I wish I could do it as a gift. But... <laughs> Yeah, he pulls it up to the um to those. Rings. I don't know what. I guess the thing that pulls you through. Yeah. There, there it is. Yeah, like this. Is that the, that's the Mazda? I guess that we were just looking at. Yeah, I want to say that's a Mazda. I don't know what that is. I can look it up. There's that website called the Internet Car Database. <laughs> <laughs> He just fucked the f underside of that car up. Big he very time. well might have. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a car wash. I don't know. I mean, why do 9 to 5 do at the car wash? You know, like, do that. <clears throat> I am amazed. I mean, aren't, aren't you? Like, I know it's 81, but... The rights to nine to five, the rights to they well, do you're a heartbreaker later. Nineteen eighty one. I think they, that's when nine to five play is a, a hit, right? Yeah, they play a a talking head song. I think uh, you'll have to tell me that. I can't tell. Like I was like, are they playing it? I couldn't tell. I actually used the um, my iPhone like with Shazam. I'm like seeing if they'll <laughs> identify it. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Like it was very strange. So let's, um... You got a lot of crappy cars. Was that a Jeep there? And this also looks like it's right in the L.A. Strip. Like, right in... Probably somebody could identify where this was filmed. And look at this little uh, thing where they, zoom, you know, make it shrink, and it looks like he's looking at, like, kind of an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> the best of times will be right back. <laughs> that should be like a ringtone right there. <laughs> yeah, <not bad. laughs> All right, let's get somewhere with this. Um, <laughs> it is. It's uh, all right, hold on. No, we don't need that scene. Um, why don't we play the scene where this Chris has really to buy the cassette? I think this girl's really cute. She's a good looking girl. Yeah, she is. I think Jill is cuter, but this girl might be a better actress. Um, so he's trying to make a date. Here we go. This so, is where Crispin is Crispin. And I have a feeling when you go to the Seven Eleven, and they're selling cassettes. Those are bootlegs. <laughs> so that's <laughs> um, that's another thing. But Crispin comes in looking for Talking Heads, and we're you remember when the Talking Heads came out, right? I mean, 
Was it that big of a deal? Like, were they considered like this innovative I don't, thing? I think they were, but it was like a really small clique of people. I never liked them personally. I don't. I wouldn't have thought a Los Angeles based, you know, kid would be going nuts over it, but I don't know. Now, in the same year, Motley Crue released their debut album right in LA. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, 1981, which is an uh, album, Too Fast for Love, which is a great, great, great album. I would love to see them do something like that, but I guess that would even be considered more of an independent thing. And plus, they did have the whole pentacle thing, you know, pentagram and devil worshipping thing behind them. Seven years. Yeah, they John? could probably get the rights for that, too. Probably, especially at the time. <laughs> You're talking about a heart attack. I think I got it. No. Oh, look at all these cool um, magazines. This, yeah, this They're called almost, magazines. <laughs> no, but this one looks almost like one of those Weekly World News things. Yeah, where UFOs are on the cover yeah. or something. No, oh, no, no. You know, have you got it? Talking heads? What are you talking about? I got Danish. I got pastries. I got slurpees. No, what no, is no. The talking heads tape. I just heard it on the radio. I got to have it. It's fantastic. It's far out. It's intense. It's. I don't believe that there's a world where Crispin Glover acts this way towards a Talking Heads album. I know. <laughs> I just or anybody. Nobody would. Yeah. It's real. Wait, wait. One title at a time. Which do you want? You, you said intense. Let me see if I have intense. Oh, no, no, never mind. I'll find it myself. Uh, oh, where is it? James Taylor? Uh, talking Heads. I got it. It's here. I can't believe it. Talking Heads. I got it. I great, got it. Great, great. 650, please. There you go. For consent. Oh, Mr. Riley. Yeah. You've got to hear this. I got to hear this. This is really good. Can I bother you for just one minute? To you, it's a minute. To me, it'll be a lifetime. Oh. <laughs> it's not a bad line. And it's also <laughs> true. Hey, wait. I'm to find this. Don't go away, all right? Where am I going to go? Does I a coca leaf Chrysler? There it is. I got it. All right. <laughs> Riley, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. Okay, this is very important now. Please listen. Please. <laughs> He's so not interested in this. I don't think he's interested in being in this show at all, anyway. He's not. He's not. He's okay. You don't have to do anything. You can just stay right here. Stay right here. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Like, it doesn't. How about maybe good. when we get to the elephant part? Maybe that'll. Uh... Cinch it. Wait, the elephant part of what? Well, the the music. He says it. It sounds like an elephant, and it oh. drives him crazy. Elephants. <laughs> <laughs> Elephant. 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 Uh huh. When you get to my age, that's the best part. Pot. I can't make up my mind between Stanford and Harvard. And this is a total laughing moment right here. Yeah, like uh, two seconds. Yeah. There's no surfing at Harvard. Well, that decides that. <laughs> Halfway, See, he yeah. would have been, if they kept this up, like he could have been. The star. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe if he stayed with this, he wouldn't have gone and... I don't know. What would he do after this? Um, Peggy Sue got married? <laughs> uh, Peggy Sue got married. Uh, moon Moonstruck. Uh, oh, yeah. Moonstruck. I forgot he was in. I didn't see it. Though. I've never seen that movie. A whole bunch of films that no one will ever see that are straight to... They're not even straight to video. They're straight I to... Something. This is where Crispin talks about his dad. We don't see his dad ever. But, I don't know, I think that's kind of depressing, too. It gets, like, really kind of serious. Crispin, what on earth are you doing up there? Nothing, Mom. So could you do nothing a little more quietly? Right, Mom. You know, I don't understand parents. Take my father. He works hard all week long, and he comes home Friday night, and my mom says... You don't have any work tomorrow, do you? And he says, no. She says, well, that's very good, because I think you need a little bit of rest. 
Saturday morning comes along. She's got him hanging wallpaper in the bathroom, cleaning out the garage, doing the gardening, going shopping. He's so tired that on Monday he sleeps on his desk. I guess that's why mothers give their sons chores to do. It doesn't make sense. Wait, then the here comes a punchline. Right. It gets them ready to be husbands. <laughs> If you call that a punchline. <laughs> and here comes a song montage again. Eek. We've got to mow the grass. We don't think that we can last. After that, we're bagging groceries all day long. Tomorrow, wash the car. And it's here you go. If you think it can't get worse, then you are wrong. <laughs> I love it. Nick Cage is like the paper boy. You could never get that over a roof. Is that the mom? <laughs> no, it's him. He's just oh, wearing a different shirt. Didn't look like it's the first time I've seen him without that sweater on. Clothes and get out the garden hose, and there's still a list of things for us to do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's very questionable, all of this. Um, but it does remind me a lot of Glee. It's a new concept. I, I can't come down too hard on them for trying something that nobody else was doing. No, I'm I'm saying it's it's cute and it's endearing, and I like the the actors i like what they're doing mm -hmm. uh, i just wish it was sharper and yeah. again i'm wondering where was it gonna go well the best of times we'll be right back moment oh. <laughs> yeah the best of times will continue in a moment Whoever butchered this by taping it and then cutting out the commercials, I mean, ugh. you get a glimpse of it sometimes. Did you yeah. see that? It was like a McDonald's just for a frame. No, I didn't see that. Let's see. Oh, 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 you mean the commercials? Yeah, yeah. I saw some towards the end. See? Yep. Yeah. I mean, how cool would it have been to have these commercials? I know, I know. But somebody cut them out. The best of times will continue in a moment. I remember those days where you were like, I'm going to do myself a favor and cut out the commercials. For <laughs> and now, and now, now we're. Yeah. Now I can just download that show in like, you know, 10 minutes and have it in perfect quality. And I really wish I had those commercials. All right. Those are pinball machines. We know that. Yeah. And they. <laughs> <laughs> So they're saying a piece is uh, needed, right? Right. Not now enough. watch the guy closest to you. Who just lets the ball go? Like, the guy on the right? he's not even tr the, the guy closest to us in the jean shirt. Yeah. You watch the ball in the machine. It's by the bumpers, but he doesn't do anything. He uh, just that, they have to get to the punchline, so he's got to let it go. You're right. Here comes Peace and love. Yeah, he just, he just let it. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> what a bunch of idiots. Right? Um, she looks like Suzanne Summers here. Um, kind of? Kind of? Let's see. Nick Cage. It's mine. A thousand they received. This is the first time I've had anything published. <laughs> So yeah, she says that she had something, uh, her letter published in the TV guide. Yeah. Saying that she found who attractive? Uh, I forget. It's a, like an older guy. Like. <clears throat> Dear sir, I'll miss Walter Cronkite because I trust a man with white hair and a mustache. <laughs> so there's, there's, keep that in mind because she's saying she likes that older man and there's a creepy scene later on with one of the girls talking about her teacher that we have to play because it's so freaking creepy. Yeah. Um, let's see. The girl with the band, I think we could pass on it personally. Until she gets to play and we can talk about the guitar. <laughs> the <laughs> naked boys the thing I think is very long of a story. But yeah, and, and the punchline isn't that great. I'll just play the punchline. Basically, they're talking about how, like, they all saw the... I forget what team. Or, like, the gym class. Swim team. Did. It was the swim team, I think. Yeah. Pictures in the house, look. Oh, oh. I kept pushing them forward with the 
sorry. <laughs> you should have been there. Yeah, we both know what a naked boy looks like. Boy, it's totally different from the pictures in the health book. Oh, been there. All private the afternoon. None of the girls could look those boys in the eye, and vice versa. You know what I mean? <laughs> should have been there. <laughs> Wait, here comes the music cue. So the girl is basically the roadie for the band. You gotta be kidding. My arms are two inches longer than they were. Why can't I hook up with some piccolo players? Hey, don't get yeah, she's the worst actor in the She's entire. terrible, man. Discouraged. I knew a guy just like you. He wanted to be in a band. He hauled instruments, speakers, and equipment all over. She can't stop moving. Yeah. Town. And then the moment came that changed his whole life. You got to play? No. He started his own moving company. Let's move it. She looks like Leaf Garrett. Um. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a good call. Yeah, same haircut too. Um, That's hilarious. Let's. What? What? What's next here? Uh, hold on. I'm looking. Is this the one with the ten year with um your ten? Or is that later? That might be later. Let's play the creepy scene, which is at 3047. All right, 3047. <laughs> Julie? Miss Lisa, guess this? what? You know Mr. Petrocubi? That dreamy Mr. Petrocubi? <laughs> well, he kept me after class today. Uh-huh. When everyone left, he looked me right into the eyes. Yeah, well, I nearly passed out. He said that soft voice of his. Lisa? You better shape up or you're going to fail. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> what? No, that's all he said. But it's the way he said it. If you know what I mean. I mean, there was something definitely left unsaid. Lisa, you better shape up or you're going to fail. <laughs> no, Julie. I think Mr. Petrocubi is interested in me as a woman. <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it means I have a womp womp. Jeez, do I have a womp womp? I, I bet I do. Let's see. You have a womp? Um... Yeah. Or at least a match game, like womp womp womp. <laughs> Here. No, Julie. I think Mr. Petrocubi is interested in me as a woman. <laughs> Cowboy <laughs> town. Uh, didn't really play, but. <laughs> you know, the adult world is always exploiting teenagers. How high are you? <laughs> <laughs> right? She looks so cute. She yeah, and, and, and uh, she does but look wow, like that voice. It's crazy. Take our style of dress. We wanted something that would make a statement about our lifestyle. This doesn't make any sense. I mean, I remember jeans costing a lot of money and everything, but she's basically complaining about that jeans cost a lot of money, like denim. Right. Not that interesting. This would have been... And then another... Another... Music song montage thing. And I'm yeah. like... Break up, three, make up. This reminded me of Glee. Um, except, I mean, in Glee, everybody was like a really seasoned pro. Yeah. And that's, I think, the big difference. I don't know. I think like something like this could have done well, given the if opportunity. They did it well. To do. Well, I think just the way it is, if they kept improving it, it, it could have. I, I yeah. Think. I mean, yeah. I could be wrong. Um, Christmas wants to date Jill, but she's really not interested. Do you remember it? Uh, well, some of it. I remember we were dancing and. Oh. What was I doing? See, he's wearing a sweater on top, but he has his little stars. <laughs> I don't care. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, oh well, well, you, you were, um, uh, 
Well, I, I was, uh, uh, well, uh, oh boy. Oh, you, you are doing anything. Uh, really. So basically she lets him down. <laughs> I've had that uh, conversation yeah. many a time. If we started going together, I mean going together. Yeah. And all right, so you know in Brooklyn, right, what it means if you're going together or if you like go together <laughs> or if you went together, you know, all that kind of stuff. I don't know, maybe not. There's like a whole difference. I wonder if the our Brooklynites who are listening to this um, can break that down for us. <laughs> but there is a big difference. It would like put a strain on our relationship. Oh well, no. no if we were like romantic, <laughs> and after a while, we'd be spending all of our time together. Right? We'd be so wrapped up in each other, like we could hardly stand it anymore. I can hardly stand it now. <laughs> and then things would get so intense have to break up and after that we just couldn't be friends anymore why well you know but but it was going so well Crispin, i really like being your friend and that's why i won't go out with you because i really like being your friend yeah oh Oh, well. Poor guy. <laughs> also, you're too freaky, Crispin. <laughs> you don't smoke enough weed. <laughs> you don't take enough Ambien. Um, what, what do you want to play the cage, like, Yeah. Drum, drama? Yeah, like, this is... R Should I play the whole thing? I mean, it's pretty long, even though it doesn't... It's like two minutes, but... <laughs> He, she gets in the band. I mean, that's the whole. Kind of <laughs> My dad's all for this military buildup. He says our country can't be too strong, and we got to shoot the other side. We won't be pushed around. That's fine. But being strong means taking chances, like this here El Salvador thing. Do you think there's going to be a war? <laughs> I mean, like I'm registered. They caught the draft. I'm in there, man. Dad says it's my patriotic duty. But shoot, I mean, you don't even get to choose a nice place. I mean, why, why do they have wars in Vietnam and Korea anyway? Why not some place real neat, like like the French Riviera or, or Bermuda? All right, I just want to give you a little bit of... <laughs> the final offensive of 1981, which is essentially the um, El Salvador um, War, and it lasted from January 10th to January 26th, 1981. Two weeks, two days. <laughs> so it lasted 16 days. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Ouch. Yeah. Um, and they certainly didn't in invoke the draft. Um, let's see. By the way, he was born in 64. This is what's interesting. This is... So they were... Um, Wow, it's kind of an interesting little bit of history here. The reason why the war had been started was because there was a changing of Carter to Reagan. And of course, Reagan was a far more um, aggressive president, um, known to be a far more conservative and aggressive president. And they had hoped, um, the El Salvadorians, I guess, or whoever was to be the... the, the um, I don't know. I don't know who is fighting here, but they were hoping that the government would be overthrown by the tw by the twentieth of January, which happened to be the same date that he would um, officially become president and be sworn in. So um, six days later, they ended it. Wow. Yeah. It's kind of weird though. That uh, it's like, do you think it's going to be a war? It's like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> no. So maybe this. Um, I mean, it, it's truly dated. Well, you don't think there's going to be a war, do you? I wish my dad wouldn't talk about it all the time. My mom looks at me and starts to cry. And dad says the army will make a man out of me. Look at that. Huh? I thought I was a man already. Dad was in the Korean War. He talks about boot camp and how he and his friends went off to Tokyo. Sounds like fun. 
But when I ask him, <laughs> sounds like fun. <laughs> but this is where it gets serious. Yeah, you know, like it does get a little bit more serious here. Hey, Dad. What about combat? He dummies right up. Gets this far away look in his eye. Changes the subject. I'll tell you one thing. You date a girl and start talking about maybe going off to war, and she gets real cuddly and affectionate. So I guess it's got its good points. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about it. I got college next year if I can keep my grade level up. I never got good grades. It'll be a tough four years. I just hope we don't have a war. It kind of spoiled things, you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's it. I, I, I was like, what? Why would you fucking rain on my parade when I'm watching this? Yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, one of the things, not not to get overly political, not to get political at all, but right now they they just passed this new law, at least here in New York, where if you are 16 years old, you can actually register to vote now, right? And I'm sure they're doing this for like a data use of some sort, but. When you register to vote, you're also putting your information into the system where, um, you know, if there is a draft, you know, that's right. the first, that's what they pull it from. So if you're 16 years old and you're like, you know what, I'm just going to register now, I'd wait because <laughs> we're not really sure what's going on in this world right now. Yeah. And who knows, you know, they might lower that, uh, that draft age. <laughs> yeah. All I know is, they can't raise it, so I'm clean. I'm free. We're both, we're both uh, <laughs> scot free. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing that's even sadder is like, it's like going to Canada is not much of an option because <laughs> it sucks there. So oh, bad. zing. That's true. Yeah, Canada is horrible. Like, where do you go? You can't even hide. Mexico. You can't, you can't go. You Honestly, can't get I'm a not job there. Lie. You can't do anything. Not going to lie. I would probably send my kid down to Mexico City. It's, it's beautiful there. <laughs> it is. It's great. Mexico is, is great. There you go. Or send him off to China. Or something. He does speak the language after all. Um, and, and since he's a U.S. citizen, he'll have no trouble coming back across the border. So not my problem. Not my problem. Get him. In the, not my problem. That's his problem. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Crispin's outside the school dance talks about parents uh, meeting at the dance. Yeah, I thought, more parents things. I was like, dude, I thought this was going to be an homage to maybe Back to the Future. Well, not really an homage, but like um, a prequel or where they got the idea for like the Back to the Future Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea dance. Because <laughs> he kind of talks about his parents like meeting in the fifties. So. Yeah, and when she comes on with the guitar, I thought she was going to do a McFly and do Johnny Be Good or something. That really actually would be an incredible like thing. But he basically makes fun of his parents in the same way that probably your kids make fun of you or my kid makes fun of me um, for not understanding today's music and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. They go to this dance... Uh, let's see, Jackie Mason. Very um, underpopulated dance. Like, yeah, that's not an entire school. No, or a grade. Seven, that's not even a grade. Seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's like maybe 15, 16 people on the screen. Hey, hey, where you going? Hey, did you have any dinner? What's happening here? <laughs> did you have any dinner? <laughs> he, uh, Jackie Mason supplied all the snacks, got tricked into it. Well, it's because you have such a marvelous voice over the phone. Lots of practice. So he convinced her to, like, go out with him. Hey, you just ate off my whole summer vacation. Hey, yo, it's Thanksgiving. I want you to hold your being gobbled up just before my eyes. Thank you. What is this? This is terrible. She looks pretty good here. She looks great. Sort of like what I was doing in your dream. Oh, so they're having a little talk about where they would be going. About you last night. What was I doing? Oh, well, you... <laughs> Nothing much. Sort of like what I was doing in your dream. Wow. Because <laughs> you can imagine with his dream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Um, she gets to play her guitar. All right. How about a hand for Janet Robbins? Well, yeah, when I first heard it, I'm like, oh my god, is she gonna play Johnny B. Good? That's yeah, yeah, but, I that's mean, what I thought. It's just a blues thing. <laughs> I'll say this much at least, it's um, I have that same exact guitar, which is great. Black, uh, a black beauty, it's what we'll it. it's called Gibson Les Paul Custom Black Beauty. Um, worth how much? <laughs> let's not discuss that. <laughs> It's tacky, Chris. But I, well, mine, mine used like if I were to sell it, um, probably about four grand, something like that. Wow. Hers is probably worth a lot more because her. I'm gonna bet hers is probably vintage for the time, or even if it was a new 1981 um, Gibson Les Paul, would be worth a lot of money. Mine is like a 2002 or something like that. <laughs> You know, Jackie Mason would have been halfway decent as a character in Boogie Nights. <laughs> he just looks like he's in Boogie Nights in this particular. Actually, Boogie Nights kind of takes place um, at this period of time, toward at the end. Yeah, at the end. Um, so yeah, the band plays their music, and then we end up back in Crispin's bedroom. Um, I'll play the. We'll be right back. <laughs> Best of times will be right back. You know, Chris Van Glover's like, I hate this. I hate it so much. <laughs> right? Hi, Mr. Yeah, Mom. It's getting late. Right, Mom. Hey, I gotta go. I, uh, I just hope you're aware of a few more things about being a teenager. It's, uh, it's a lot of different things. We're not kids anymore, and we're not adults yet. Sometimes it's a, it's a lot of fun, a little scary. Sometimes it's beautiful. Everything's so new. So this goes on for a little while, but I, I want to play the credits. <clears throat> Should I play more of that? I mean, yeah, no, no, no. Go ahead. So his mother yells, like, go to sleep, and it's like, all right, Mom. Well, this has been the best of times with me, Crispin Glover, and that's Jill Sholin. This is my buddy, Nicholas Coppola. <laughs> Just Nicholas Coppola is so funny, man, and <laughs> pointing at his arm. And that's Julie Pikarski and Kevin Cortez, and here's Lisa Hope Ross and David Rambo. And old Janet Robin. Old Janet Robin. Oh, and our, our special guest star, Jackie Mason. Well, I thought he was going to do all of the credits. I was like, what? <laughs> That'd be crazy. Associate so, producer. I know, watching. Right? See you soon. So, uh, well, we not see you soon. We don't know who you the other friends are. <laughs> And what's this Showtime Express? Oh, maybe they were taping something else. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it wouldn't have been. I think they would have thrown this on like in the summer. You, you know, so? like, like as a, a fill-in. Fill yeah. I don't know. I I think this would have. If I was like maybe twelve years old or eleven years old, this might have caught me at the right time, and I would have watched it. It looks stupid. I just can't believe it was an hour long. Yeah, I think uh, again they really had to like revamp, rewrite it, like be sharper, more, uh, just tighter. Yeah, have more of a story. I mean, you do need some kind of story. Yeah, I, I think that's a very strange show in general. And I'm just gonna get the little, <laughs> that up there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if, if you like this, uh, give us a little thumbs up. And Chris, thank you so much for doing this tonight. I really appreciate it. I, it I was like, the best of time. I like these unsold and um, 
Forgotten Forever trailers. And not trailers, pilots. I think pilots yeah, are we, great. We should do more. Well, we have like 250 of them. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and so many more that's probably not yet discovered. Oh my God, there's so many out there. But um, yeah, so thank you so much, Chris. And I, I, look, a few, I look forward to doing another, like several of these. I think they're a lot yeah. of fun. And if you have any ideas for a pilot, send them over to us. We'll put a link to the best of times below so you can watch the whole thing you know without us yipper yabbering and tell us what you think also if you know anything that we might have missed let us know it would be kind of interesting I'll just stand alone alright let's stop the recording <laughs>